Next we want to think about the signs and symptoms in anemia. A sign is something that we detect with our senses. A symptom is something the patient reports to us. Now, clearly there's going to be signs and symptoms relating to the anemia. So the fact that there's a reduced oxygen carrying capacity of the blood is going to generate a spectrum of clinical features, as you would expect. But before we go on to that, I wanted to think about the signs and symptoms of the underlying cause. Because obviously there's going to be a cause of the anemia and we want to be able to recognise the signs and symptoms of the underlying cause as well. And the main cause here that we're going to come across, or globally certainly the main cause of anemia, is iron deficiency. So iron deficiency is remarkably common. And the figures are hard to believe, but true. About a third of the world's population have iron deficiency. So what are the signs and symptoms of iron deficiency? Well, iron, of course, is essential for the formation of the haemoglobin molecule. We, we know this already. So if there's iron deficiency, there's going to be a reduction in the amount of haemoglobin in the body. And the haemoglobin is what makes blood red. So there's going to be less redness, if you like, in the body because there's less haemoglobin. And one of the features we get with reduced haemoglobin is uh, pallor. Pallor just means pale, really. And we're going to see this in the skin. So in iron deficiency, the person looks pale. And we're going to get these features regardless of any features of anemia. These are as well as any features of anemia that might be present. Paleness in the skin, paleness in the mucosa. So looking inside the mouth, for example, the lips can look pale. Classic one is the uh, conjunctiva. If you just peel down the lower eyelid and look at the bottom of the conjunctival sac, it can appear pale. And another pl classic place for seeing the, the paleness is the nail beds. Pale looking nail beds. So that group's caused by the uh, reduction in the uh, haemoglobin the iron deficiency and the reduction in the haemoglobin. Now, another group of features um, caused by the iron deficiency affect the, the mouth. Mouths are very useful to look at for clinical indicators of all sorts of things. And the first feature of iron deficiency that often presents and we do see quite commonly in iron deficiency areas is glossitis. Now glossitis is inflammation of the tongue. The tongue can look inflamed and it feels sore. The patient complains of a sore tongue. And another feature relating to the mouth is angular stomatitis. Now, itis um, means inflammation of. Um, stoma actually relates to opening. Of course, the mouth is an opening. And what you see particularly, if, these, if this, is the, uh, this is the mouth here, these are the lips. What you see particularly is uh, inflammation at the corner of the lips there, like that. 
angular stomatitis. And also affecting the mouth, uh, mouth ulcers are more common. So again, the, these are features of the iron deficiency rather than features of the anemia, these ones affecting the mouth. Um, <clears throat> another feature of iron deficiency is um, hair loss. Always worth considering iron deficiency in, in hair loss. Now, another interesting feature of iron deficiency is called um, uh, pica. Now, if you've been pregnant or you're married to someone who's pregnant, you know about pica because it's it's the uh, it's the craving for different types of food. So it's an eating craving. You have cravings for foods, but. In iron deficiency, the pica is not really related to food, it's strange. So people have a craving for uh, ice. They'll suck ice and they'll eat ice and take ice drinks. And then ridiculous things like uh, clay, soil. They'll have a craving to eat these things. Sometimes paper, uh, starch. Uh, pebbles, um, that very strange, but uh, a feature of iron deficiency anemia. So that's another sort of subset of features of iron deficiency. So we've seen that these are looking at signs and symptoms in anemia, but rather than looking at the anemia itself straight away, looking at the signs and symptoms of the underlying cause of, underlying cause of the anemia. So these are features of the underlying cause of the anemia. And on this page, we've looked at the particular features of iron deficiency anemia, which tragically affects a third of the world's population. And we see that can lead to uh, symptoms Signs from reduced hemoglobin, things affecting the mouth, hair loss, and the, uh, the unusual appetite. Um, but we can go on and look at other signs and symptoms of anemia. Sorry, other signs and symptoms um, not related to the anemia. The si other signs and symptoms related to the underlying cause. So I'll scrub that one actually, be that one. Other signs and symptoms related to the underlying cause. And another one of these causes is B12 deficiency. So we'll carry on this on a, on a separate piece of paper, I think. So what might we see in, uh, in B12 deficiency? Vitamin B12 deficiency. Well, we know that vitamin B12 is essential for the formation of the red blood cells, but we're not looking at that in this particular video because we're looking at the signs and symptoms of the underlying cause. And the B12 deficiency is an underlying cause of the anemia. So as well as the anemia, what might we see? Well, in vitamin B12 deficiency, we often get uh, neurological features. because B12 is essential for the health and well-being of the uh, nervous system. So what we can see here is uh, sometimes peripheral neuropathy. This is disease of the peripheral nervous system, often affecting the legs. And another thing we do get here is um, is uh, restless legs.
restless leg syndrome. Very common. I get it myself when I'm tired. Um, now, I don't know for sure that this is caused by the, uh, the B12 deficiency, but it certainly occurs uh, in anemic patients, that's for sure. And you just can't keep your legs still. You've got this sort of burning feeling in your legs. Really quite unpleasant. Um, also in, in B12 deficiency, we get uh, spinal cord problems. And particularly there's a condition called um, subacute degeneration of the spinal cord. And because the spinal cord affects all of the body below the neck, that, that's what can be affected. And so we can get uh, weakness, uh, tingling, and uh, numbness. And these start very gradually, but can become uh, more severe. So uh, B12 deficiency. Now, there's other underlying causes that we can um, think about. So other lines that can go from this bit, the underlying cause. For example, we could have um, hemolytic anemia. So there can be signs and features caused by the hemolysis. Um, there can be a, a plastic anemia. And there can be a sickle cell disease. So these are all underlying causes of anemia, but they can generate their own clinical features. So we've looked at the clinical features of B12 deficiency. Let's look briefly at the clinical features of uh, hemolysis that you get in hemolytic anemia a plastic anemia and a sickle cell disease. Looking at the signs and symptoms of the cause. Well, in a hemolytic anemia, in hemolytic anemia, the anemia is caused by the excessive breakup of the red cells. And this will release the pigment from the haemoglobin, the, uh, bili, uh, the bilirubin. And in the tissues, we see that as jaundice. So there can be jaundice. It's normally not pronounced in hemolytic anemia, although you can get a crisis. It's um, most observable in the, the sclera, the whites of the eyes. Um, Another cause, as we mentioned, is aplastic anemia. So in aplastic anemia, <clears throat> we're going to get um, a pan neutropenia. The bone marrow is just not working properly. And particularly the bone marrow won't produce uh, white cells, so we're at risk of infection. And it won't produce the platelets, the thrombocytes, so we can get bleeding. Again, clinical features not related to the anemia, but caused by the deficiency, the penia of other essential blood components. Um, I think the last one I'll mention is the uh, sickle cell. So we know that sickle cell disease can cause sickle cell anemia, but sickle cell disease can also lead to other clinical features such as leg ulcers, um, stroke, and features consistent with pulmonary arterial uh, high blood pressure, hypertension. And this can cause features such as, I won't write them all down, but um, shortness of breath. Well, might, might a few. Shortness of breath. Starts with shortness of breath on exertion, then becomes shortness of breath um, even at rest. 
uh, fatigue, uh, syncope, um, chest pain. chest tightness especially, uh, can lead on to systemic edema, um, cyanosis, tachycardias. If you wanted to know that in detail, look at the features of pulmonary arterial hypertension. But the point is, all these things, the uh, <coughs> hemolytic anemia, the aplastic anemia, the vitamin B12 deficiency, the sickle cell disease, all have their own ranges of clinical features. In addition to the features of um, anemia. So having looked at the uh, signs and symptoms of the underlying cause, in the next video, we want to think about the signs and symptoms of the anemia specifically, the signs and symptoms caused by the reduced oxygen carrying capacity of the blood.